been so used to being a voice for others, always encouraging others to fight for their dreams and to empower themselves. But these past few days have been hard to take that advice for myself. I would admit that I was overcome with doubt and fear of speaking up and um, fear of the consequences, fear of what people would say. But I'm taking my own advice. I'm speaking up, but this time I'm speaking up for myself. I'm empowering myself. I am fighting for my story. I'm fighting for my experiences because people have been trying to taint my name and drag me down so many issues that are not real and didn't happen. And um, I'm not doing this. I'm not sharing all this to attack anyone or to hurt anyone. I, I just want to share the truth and I want to share my story and I want to be true to myself because I know that this will be the only way for me to look back at all this and happily move on. And um, days leading up to the pageant, I decided to uh, had my whole team tested and stay in my house because we weren't allowed to go out and I had a lot to learn, I had a lot to prepare for. I wanted to invest time into learning my hair and makeup, into knowing how to style myself, knowing how to to um, to work by myself because we were all going to be independent up in Baguio. And um, I practiced my q and I practiced my walking, everything. And um, days leading up to the pageant, it was a Sunday. I think it was the 11th of October. And um, I was so busy preparing for the pageant and I didn't realize that I was exhausted and I was tired. I was busy handling businesses, work, I was catching up with all the brands that I had to to, uh, to work with and uh, I was also busy with my preparations in the pageant and everything just become everything just became too overwhelming that I didn't even realize. So that day I woke up and as I took my first steps, I passed out and I collapsed. And uh, that day was really hard. It was three days before we were asked to we were asked to check in and um, I cut my head, I sprained my knee, I broke my toe and um, it was all very challenging because as a beauty queen you have to walk in high heels, you have to look your best, your face has to be presentable at all times and it was um, it was depressing for me it was devastating for me I spent the whole day in bed I didn't know what to do I uh, decided to do my rehab at home and to do whatever I could at home I sought professional help and so come our check-in day I was able to walk and I was able to to act like nothing happened more than the pain and uh, more than the struggle all throughout this these past few weeks, it was more of the the schedule that we had to really keep up with that gave me so much pressure and that gave me so much um, that was difficult for me to keep up with. I was prepared to do things on my own, but I wasn't prepared for schedules being so delayed, days were in we weren't able to eat because of our schedules, because of the hectic schedules that we had to that we had to really keep up with. There were days that we were kept in our rooms not knowing why and we were just there in our rooms and uh, those little things all built up at the end, all the anxiety, all the pressure, the exhaustion, it was a lot to handle. We continued on to our activities and we had the best night of my journey as a candidate and I had my best memory getting to bond with all the girls, getting to spend time with them because we weren't able to due to pandemic protocols and we were able to bond that night. I got to get I got to um I got a chance to get to know all the girls and uh 
I was so thankful. And at that night, I was on the end of uh, receiving cryptic messages from people about, again, the results. And uh, I just, I didn't mind them. I chose to have fun. I chose to spend time with the girls. I chose to spend time with my sisters. And I chose to spend time for myself and just have fun. And early in the morning of the 25th, at around 3 a.m., I uh, I heard things that I wasn't supposed to hear. And it hurt. I must admit, I went back to my room and I cried so hard. I asked, I just got out and went to my room and wanted to be by myself. And all these questions just came back to my head. Everything that I've been hearing for the past two days just came rushing in my head. And I, I was heartbroken. I was devastated that night. And I called my family and I wanted to go home. My car was waiting outside and I, I, I could have gone home. But they told me to think about it, that whatever I decide, they're supporting me 100%. And um, they told me to pray. And after that, I, did, I, I took their advice and uh, I slept on it. I woke up the next day and I wasn't feeling too well. Um, but one candidate told me, because I wanted to go home so bad, and one candidate told me and asked me, what's your purpose? And that made me realize why I was there. It made me realize that I was there because I had a purpose and that was to glorify God. I had a purpose and that was to empower myself so that I can empower other people. And I held true to that until the very end. I put on my makeup, I stood up, I got dressed, I smiled, I looked pretty and went down deliberately when it was already long gown and um, top 16 was already walking for their long gown and I knew that not so long we would crown the winner and everything would be over and I would be able to go home and so I went down and for one last time I told myself to smile for the show for the cameras and uh, I did that I went down I sat down I smiled I greeted everyone and I and um News of the winner already leaked online because of, um, I think, the streaming. It was more advanced than ours. But when I got down, I saw that our feed was so delayed and it was only part of the announcement of the top 16. And so many people came to me and was hugging me and a lot of tears were were happening around and so many questions of why how what just overwhelming me too much and after knowing what I knew the past two days everything just came crashing down on me and I I couldn't handle I admit I wasn't strong enough to handle that at that moment and I knew I was gonna break down I knew I was gonna cry and I didn't want to do that in front of the cameras they tried so hard to get a breakdown off of me in the past and it never worked and i told them that i will not give them the satisfaction and i and i went to the production and i told them that it was too hard for me that i can't stay here and i told them that i really want to leave can we please fast forward the feed because they already announced online who the winner was and they said they can't because we have to finish the feed and we're filming and I said, I can't do this. And I said, can we please just finish? And they told me they had to take the picture. And I said, can we just do it now? And they, they said they couldn't. And I said, I'm sorry that I had to leave. And I left. And at that moment, I just realized that for nine months, I kept putting this journey first. I kept putting this organization first. and. And it was my time to put myself first. And so I did. And uh, I went to my room, I got the remaining of my bags. I sent a message to Mama Jonas Gafford and I told him my reason. I told him that I was leaving and I, um, I told them everything. 
And so he said okay, and he said he was worried about what social media and what everybody would think, and I told him to not worry and I would handle everything. I uh, sent a message to our winner and I congratulated her and I told her um, the reason why I'm leaving and she replied thank you and after that I thought everything was okay. I did my job, I, I um, did what I knew was right and I packed up my bags and I left. On my way home I was exhausted and I passed out in the car and I was just asleep the whole ride and upon reaching Manila, my family was there and they were telling me everything that was happening online and everything that, all the stories and all the issues that people were making up and I just couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't believe that people are capable of such things that we're in this beauty pageant joining because of our dreams because we want to empower people but it's so toxic the industry the fans the bashers the criticism everything is just so toxic and i just couldn't believe it i was not hurt i was not angry but i was sad i was sad because so many girls just like me dream of this platform dream of this position because we know it is meant for something good but so much people who aren't even connected to the organization are just trying to tear everybody down and it just saddens me that in the midst of this pandemic in the midst of a celebration such as a beauty pageant the first ever miss universe philippines we there are people who have it in their hearts to to criticize and to spread rumors and to spread so much lies and i just couldn't take it i I blocked out social media, I checked out of social media, I decided to take time for myself and to rest and to recover from a very exhausting two weeks and trying to get ready to go back into volleyball training and into work and to managing stuff and I just slept, I slept, I slept so well. And um, what saddens me the most is that when people were making issues about me leaving and not being part of that photo, the organization knew why. They knew my reasons, they knew I left, but they never said anything. They kept quiet. And now, so many stories are circulating, so many issues are circulating, and I, I told myself that I have to speak up. I have to defend myself, I have to fight for myself, because I knew nobody would. And I'm saying this, I'm sharing this because I hope that in the future it would be a different experience for future girls and future queens and future candidates who dream of becoming, becoming the next representative of our country. But I also want to take this time to remind everybody that we should stop bashing. We should stop spreading lies and negativity and it doesn't mean that even though we are free to speak our hearts and our minds and share our passions about a certain topic that it is okay to bring and take people down just because we feel bad i never answered bashers online because i respect people's opinion and right now i hope that they respect mine because this is my story, this is my experience, and I really want to tell everybody that I'm not alone in this. There are a lot of us that wish things happened differently, that our journey would have been somehow better, but we do understand the conditions of the pandemic, and we do understand the hardships that everybody had to go through and the adjustments that everybody had to make just to make this possible and i i just hope that people allowed me to accept my fate and my destiny in my own terms and i just hope that there were things that i shouldn't have heard i hope that i never heard them because accepting failure is one thing but for it to be mixed up with so much doubt and so much uncertainty towards myself as a human being, as a woman, 
that was something that I needed time to process and I needed time to to accept. I know I'm strong. I know I'm confident. I know I am empowered. But at that moment, I doubted everything. I doubted who I was. And I wasn't used to that. I was. It was a very foreign feeling for me. And so I panicked and I did what I had to do. And I do not regret any decision that I ever made in this pageant. I do not regret joining. I do not, being, I do not regret being part of it. I do not regret leaving. And with everything circulating now, it brings me back to two years ago when I answered on the national stage a question about fake news. And I want to take this time to remind everybody of that answer because I know that it was timely and it was a, there was a reason it went to me. And I said back then that fake news is very rampant nowadays, but in order to fight it, we must first know what we are reporting and know that what we are reading and at the same time be responsible, be accountable of what we say online. I hope that media always filters and uses their resources to deliver true and authentic news. And I want to remind everyone that when I said the word media, I did not just pertain to radio, to, t to TV, to news. I was talking about me, I was talking about you, I was talking about everyone. Because everybody with a social media platform is a part of media. Because you share your personal opinions online and your stories online and your experiences online. And it becomes news. So we are all accountable for what is happening right now in the pageant industry. And we are all accountable and we are all responsible of all the lies and all the issues that have been circulating now. That have been affecting not only me but a lot more people. And I just want to take a stand on this. Because the reason why we join beauty pageants is to be empowered and to stand up for people. And if we keep silencing women to speak up about certain things that are hurting them and are bothering them, then why are we here? What is this all for? If we keep telling people to keep quiet and to just accept their fate, and to be humble. There is a difference between being humble and being silent. There is a difference between having dignity and knowing what you deserve as a person. Knowing that you have the confidence to fight for something, there is a big difference. You have to be brave. You have to have courage and to speak up in the midst of all this I had to muster up every ounce of courage in my soul to be able to film this and to be able to come out with this because it is not only affecting me, it is not only affecting the current batch, it will affect the future of pageantry. And I just want to say that as a queen, as a real queen, it's not just crowns that we should be fixing. We should be fixing society because we can. We should be fixing systems because we can. We should be fixing social issues because we can. We should be fixing the future because we can. And that's why we are here. And that's why I am choosing to take a stand. And, I, and that's why I am choosing to use my voice is because I know I can. And I was meant for something more. And I know that I was meant for this. This may be my purpose, you know, not to wear a crown of jewels, but maybe to wear a crown of thorns. And in both, I praise God. In both, I'd be happy. In both, I will use and empower others through this. People have been asking me how I've been dealing with social media and everything that's happening around me and I know that some of you who are listening to this you also have experienced criticism and bullying and so many negative things online and hopefully this can help you ever since uh, I started having a life in the public eye I've always played I've always performed 
I've always lived for one thing, for one person, and that is God. And I learned to never seek approval. I learned to never seek the praises or the validation of people. And that is the reason why I also don't die by their criticism. I live my life for my purpose. I live my life for one reason. And even as a social media influencer having a life online, I do not let it dictate who I am. I do not let it validate who I am. And that is why it, it saddens me that every single thing now needs a validation, a receipt on social media. If people don't see it, it's not true. If people don't like it, it doesn't mean anything. If people don't comment on it, it's not validated. And it has to stop. It, it has to it has to stop not only for ourselves but for the people around us we, we can't we can't connect we can't associate our worth as human beings as women with who we are online and it's it's sad that all of this is happening I hope that I could accept, enjoy, and go through this journey as smoothly as possible, but I guess that wasn't the case for me because I'm here now and I, I have to speak up about this and I have to get this out of my chest because I know that this is the only time that I can really be able to move on. And. I'm not doing this to change people's opinion of me. I'm not doing this to convince anyone. I'm doing this to say my truth. I'm doing this to say my experience and to share my story because I know that somebody out there watching is, is um, stands with me on this. And I'm not alone standing in this because we, all the people behind me, all the women behind me, we are standing for something greater. We are standing for something much more than our pageant experiences. And I hope that by sharing this, people just learn how to appreciate beauty pageants for what it is. To not be so quick to judge a person, organization, a candidate, because you don't know what we go through. You do not know what happens behind the scenes of every picture, every video, every production number that you see on TV. Nobody knows the hours that were put into it, the, the effort that was put into it. And so all our feelings are valid. And you cannot tell us to just keep quiet about this because why are we here? Why are we advocates? Why are we women who dream of changing our cities, our countries, and the universe if we can't even speak up about certain issues such as this. If we cannot speak up about online bullying and cyberbullying and people spreading lies and fake news just spreading all around. And I know there will be a lot of negativity after this. And I just want to say that this will be my first, my final word. I will not be entertaining questions. I will not be entertaining interviews after this. And once I put this out there, I hope that as much as I respected everybody's opinion of me, the good, the bad, I've embraced all of it. I'm, as I'm asking all of you to respect mine and to respect my own opinion right now. And after this, we're all gonna move on. We're all gonna be happy. We're all gonna support. The person the organization that we need to support as one country as one philippines and i hope that we may all learn from this and grow from this and just put an end to to all of the negativity that everybody has been spreading online <laughs>